think you're being treated unfairly? I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Yesterday, I'm working on editing the video about the Buck Rogers Starfighter replica, and I start getting messages from Patreon from people that are telling me, are you checking out the Hasbro Pulse announcement right now on live video? And I'm just like, people still pay attention to Hasbro Pulse? I wasn't aware, <laughs> aware of that. Uh, sure, I'll go over and check it out. And so I clicked on it and I started watching the video midstream and they were announcing, I guess, the final round of Empire Strikes Back stuff. And the one thing that I was noticing as I was mentally trying to get caught up on, on what was going on uh, was just the sheer number of angry emojis that were going up in the live, the live feed on, on Facebook. It was like, ooh, like that, that doesn't, that doesn't bode well. Uh, so they're talking about, you know, all the typical stuff you would expect, you know, like, hey, we're coming out with a Darth Vader on an Empire Strikes Back retro card and he's Black Series 6 inch. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, okay, we expected that. Hey, we're coming out with Chewbacca. And it's like, yeah, we've seen that about a thousand times before with you guys. That's, that's, that's necessary. Um, nobody, nobody's saying that, you know, Darth Vader and Chewbacca should be missing from the assortment. Absolutely not. It's good. It's good that they're in there, but making a big deal out of it at this point, probably a little tone deaf, little tone deaf. And then they hit the part that everybody was trying to get me in for before it happened, which was... Uh, or, or maybe that happened afterward. I'm trying to remember because it was a, it was a blur. It was, it was, I either got there right after they announced it or right before. And then I was told, and then I went back hard to remember. doesn't really matter. Anyway, as part of this live stream, they announced this big play set and it was the carbon freeze chamber from the Empire Strikes Back in three and three quarter inch scale. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, wait, that, that's not a playset. That's part of a playset. Like maybe if you're lucky, a quarter of a playset, but that, that's not a playset. That's not a, uh, an interactive environment for a figure. And then when they said it was $50, and then when they said, if you want the full diorama, you have to buy two and put them together with the freeze chamber in the middle. So you're basically buying two freeze chamber capsules, not using one freeze chamber center and putting the two things around one freeze chamber. And I'm looking at this rickety looking thing and I'm like, 50 bucks a piece for two identical parts that go together. There's nothing over the top of the freeze chamber. There's, there are these staircases with little platforms to nowhere. Like you're literally buying two bridges to nowhere with this thing for a hundred bucks. You must be so embarrassed. <laughs> for a scale, mind you, that Hasbro through their actions has all but abandoned. You know, they say, oh, well, we're, we're coming out with a three, seven inch, a uh, three and three quarter inch, 3.75 inch uh, Stormtrooper, and the card back will look retro, uh, and he's super articulated, but the, the picture on the card back will be a Stormtrooper from the freeze chamber. Ooh. And then they say, oh yeah, and by the way, next year, we don't have this ready yet, uh, sorry for it being 15 years late, but next year we're coming out with the 3.75 inch super articulated Bespin Escape Princess Leia. The Leia in the white jumpsuit with the Cloud City hair that has the Stormtrooper rifle who fights her way through the hallways at the end of Empire Strikes Back. I believe to date 
there has only been one official action figure of that version of Leia in three and three quarter inch scale. There's been a black series and there's been this one Power of the Jedi era uh, Princess Leia that doesn't have all the articulation or whatever. And so they're finally coming out with that one. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, this three and three quarter inch co collection now, this three and three quarter inch product line from Hasbro, it's basically the product equivalent of trying to hide a burp during a meal with people. Like you're like, you know, like there's not a full product line. It's just like, oh yeah, we forgot about that Leia. Better get that out there. Excuse me. And it's just going to be out there. And of course, like the Jabba's Palace, this, and, and the Jabba's Palace diorama, uh, yeah, it looked like something that I'd seen fans put together for diorama competitions at toy shows, which I'm not knocking those. I mean, fans do some amazing work with their action figure dioramas. But you would expect that a toy company with billions of dollars and a massive IP like Star Wars would not suddenly be getting into the diorama business. But they are because they are creatively bankrupt at this point and they're just putting out whatever they think people will plunk their money down for. That was a $50 playset that I just saw is now on clearance because nobody wants a wall with a Tauntaun head mounted on it. That Tauntaun head probably coming from a pre-existing Tauntaun toy that they just lopped off, re recast, and put on the wall. You can make that in your house and make it better and do a full Jabba's Palace with it. I know, I've seen the dioramas at toy shows. And for cheaper. You can get more for less uh, if, you do that, if you do that yourself. We expect from a toy company immersion, interactivity, uh, a kind of environment, you know, a fully realized play environment with a play set. Uh, Playmobil. I just did the video about the Ghostbusters firehouse. The suggested retail price of that firehouse is $79.99. Three levels, working doors, tons of accessories, four or five figures that come with it. I can't even keep count at this point. Five figures come with it. Telephones, keyboards, pots and pans, televisions and monitors and video cameras and a containment unit and a roll-up door and the Ghostbuster sign and all this stuff comes with that playset. I mean, it's endless for $79.99. And Hasbro is turning around and saying, for $50, you'll get half a platform held up on these spindly little legs. I mean, it looks, it looks like you could blow it over with a sneeze. It looks so cheap. I mean, it is the most Mickey Mouse thing I've ever seen. And to add insult to injury, that's not really even the full diorama. We expect you, if you really want to have the full effect, which the full effect is slipshod anyway, the full effect is still junk. Buy it for a, buy two and pay a hundred dollars for the privilege. I, I, we've been waiting on a Bespin playset since The Empire Strikes Back came out. And to know that to date for the three and three quarter inch line, this cardboard one from 1981 or whatever it was, 81 is still the best thing going is sad. I mean, this is, this is sad. I expect this kind of crap from Hasbro at this point. This, this kind of, of rinky dink effort. I say that with a lot of sarcasm. That doesn't shock me. But what does shock me at this point are the number of people who are still excited and willing to buy into it. They're still ready to plunk their money down for something like this. A hundred bucks for what barely amounts to a figure stand. A hundred dollars. And we know that the fans are willing to pay exponentially more. Look, as much as I don't like the HasLab model 
I don't like the Kickstarter model because I feel like the sale barges would have sold anyway. And they would have because they sold out. They got their Kickstarter. They sold them all, all right? They know that fans will pay through the nose for a whole experience. The sail barge was a whole experience. Why is the Bespin playset, the Bespin world, not being done at the $400 price point? If that's what it takes, let's, let's ignore the evidence that Playmobil can put out a three-story playset with 50 accessories and five figures for 80 bucks. Let's just conveniently ignore that for Hasbro's benefit. Let's, let's ride right past that so that Hasbro doesn't look worse than it already does. And let's say, okay, we have the data here from your own company that says fans will pay 400 and up for the privilege of owning something that you make. So, so where is that? Where is that effort? You know, I was watching the live stream that they were doing. I, I caught it somewhere in the middle, like I said. And I was immediately reminded of all of the chintzy marketing that Hasbro tried to do internally for that cookie monster thing that failed. And then a few weeks ago, the flashes came back from that stupid announcement they made where they were making a life-size talking funny Deadpool head, like it's an animatronic Deadpool head that says funny things. <laughs> and between the Cookie Monster videos, the Deadpool head marketing and, and images that were coming out, and the two people that were doing the live stream, I started to realize that every single person that works for Hasbro's internal marketing team, they all look like that guy that always lived on your dormitory floor in college. There was always that one guy. We all knew him and we all knew some poor schmo that had to be his roommate every year. And that guy was always different every year, but he was always the same. It was always some roly poly idiot that was always just kind of out to lunch and they thought the dumbest crap was funny and cool. And, and, and they were just this sort of like always wearing sandals and shorts kind of guy, like with their, you know, their t-shirt untucked and their hair looked like it, you know, they looked like Jack Black without a mustache. I mean, they just, but with long hair, you know, like they all, they all have that affect. They all, look like and, and act like that kind of guy. Not literally, but the, the aura they present is this kind of person who would come up with something as useless as an animatronic Deadpool head that says funny things. It, 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 who wants that? That is, that is the epitome of useless merch. And these are the people hawking Hasbro's new stuff. And we're supposed to get excited. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a way to stop Hasbro at this point from just being stupid. I mean, that's, that's just going to keep happening. Their distribution is going to continue to be terrible. They're going to continue to not make enough of the things that people do want. They're going to continue to avoid making things that they know people will buy in favor of things people don't want to buy. What I don't understand at this point is why people are still excited about this garbage. And I'm going to put this out there because this freeze chamber thing is such a flagrant cash grab. This freeze chamber thing is a scam. It is staggering to see how Hasbro will just say, yeah, you're going to give us a hundred bucks for this. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. Any toy YouTube channel out there right now that you have watched, and I don't know because I haven't watched any of them, but I'm sure they're out there. But I'm telling you, any toy YouTube channel out there right now 
that, that is talking about this thing in the positive, this freeze chamber, if they are talking about it like it's this awesome thing, you need to give that channel a hard look. I'm not saying that they're marketing for Hasbro or anything like that. I'm not implying any of that. What I am saying is that those YouTube channels that see this kind of product for $100, $50 a side, and they're championing it on their platform, they do not have your best interests in mind. There is no way. And their motivation might simply be that like a lot of fanboys, they just can't get out of their own way. They cannot think objectively about this. And so they just get excited about everything because it is very easy to get most people hyped about garbage these days. But for the rest of us, the, the few of us left who are still thinking people out there, and if you consider yourself a thinking person, think about this long and hard. Do not pay $100 for that thing. Do not pay $50 for one half of it. I guarantee you the maker movement will have something within the next year to 18 months in response to this that is better than anything Hasbro has offered. And while it might cost more than $100 to get, I bet you it will be the same comprehensive experience that Playmobil was able to deliver for 80 bucks with the Firehouse. And that's the saddest part, is that Hasbro cannot keep saying that this is the price point for these things. If it is, they're doing something wrong because Playmobil certainly doesn't have that problem. And they're delivering some amazing stuff and Hasbro is delivering absolute milk toast products. I mean, they're less than effort. They're less than minimum effort. And now they really do look cheap. Any YouTube toy channel that, is, that has held a torch for this thing you need to ask them what they're thinking. I'm not kidding. Because if that if that's their if that's their level of scrutiny, then everything they review and talk about and every conclusion they come to is officially suspect. Because no self-respecting toy collector in their right mind is going to pay 50 bucks for half of that and 100 bucks for all of it. In either case, you're letting Hasbro slap you in the face. Have some dignity. I mean, seriously. To all of you out there who are watching this who aren't toy collectors and you're probably going to want to leave a comment saying they're just toys, what are you all worked up about? Uh, this video is not for you. This video is for toy collectors. I am talking to my fellow toy collectors. I am not talking to you, Joe Rando 46, that just happened upon this video and wants to just leave snark. Uh, I'm talking to people who are invested in this hobby and in this community. And to those people, I say, don't buy this. Do not reward Hasbro for this mediocrity and do not reward another YouTube channel that's championing mediocrity by allowing them to get you hyped for something that is basically just fleecing you. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching this, everybody. If you wanna see fans doing better work than the actual toy companies, you can watch my Buck Rogers Starfighter review here. And if you just wanna see more stuff about Star Wars toys, you can watch our Star Wars Follies playlist here. I am going to go wash the stink of Hasbro Pulse off of me now. <laughs>